from Studio 10 in downtown Numberopolis, it's The Number Show, starring Zero and the Digits, with special guest, Pi. And now, here's your host, Zero. Hello, hello. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, really. Give it up for the digits. In preparation for tonight's special guest, Pi the King of Circles, three, one, and four invited me out for pie dessert. Everyone wanted different types of pies. Three selected three berry pie, one selected cherry pie with streusel top, and four chose blueberry pie with a grid crust. Me, I just wanted pie crust and ice cream to eat with all of the pies. Want to see the selfie of us all eating the dessert pies? Yes! Yes! Show us! Everyone else got full, but I kept eating all the pies and never felt full. Everyone calls me the number with a big hole in their stomach. I'm excited about our guest tonight, the king of circles, Pie. Stick around for lots of learning and eating after a message from a sponsor. Are your tires losing their healthy circular shape? Our three minute, 14 second check ensures that they keep on rolling along. We're back. Let's meet our special guest, Pie. Hello, Pi. Tell the audience about your hat and what you are carrying with you. The hat looks like a pie baker's hat, circular and short. Yes, sirree. I am wearing a pie baker's hat, and I'm carrying a colorful rolling pin. 3.14159265. Yes, yes, thank you. Whenever folks see me, someone starts showing off their memory skills by reciting my decimal expansion. I guess they think I need help remembering my details. But I would like folks to know more about me than how to recite my decimal expansion. Tell us some fun things about you. Math teachers all over the United States celebrate me on Pi Day, on March 14th. The first three digits of my decimal expansion are 3.14, which becomes March 14th in the USA. Everywhere else in the world, they could create a Pi Day on January 3rd, which would make me the first celebration of the new year as students return to school. Fee was here recently, and she was encouraging teachers to have a fee day on January 6th in the USA or June 1st in the rest of the world. Oh, I really like Fee. We have a few things in common. One, we are both stylish Greek letters. Two, we are both irrational math constants known to many by our decimal expansions. Three, we are both hidden in the dimensions of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. I see my first 50 digits at the bottom of the screen. Wow, cool! My character means perimeter, and the Greeks knew I was hiding in every circle. Look inside my hat and see my definition. I am the ratio of the circumference or perimeter divided by the diameter of any circle. And often I'm the symbol of mathematics when folks talk about STEM or STEAM. I've been hearing the phrases STEM and STEAM, but never really knew what they mean. STEM means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. STEAM adds the arts to STEM. Before we go into more detail, it's time for a break. Just a sweet little man helps the homework get done. The homework get done. Homework get done. Just a sweet little man helps the homework get done in a most depieful way. We're back with all math students' favorite number, pi. <laughs> Before the break, you mentioned that both you and Fee are hidden in the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Please explain. 
Apparently, most historians believe my value was likely part of the design of the Great Pyramid. It is controversial whether or not phi appears solely due to the geometric relationship of phi to me, <laughs> pi. If you're interested to learn more, search the web or review the supplemental materials from the website www.numbersalive.org. Any other fun facts about you that you would like folks to know as they get ready to celebrate Pi Day? Sure. March 14th is also Einstein's birthday. I begin every March 14th with a moment of silence to Albert, a great scientist with funky hair. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Albert. Happy birthday to you. Audience, are you interested in more fun stories about pie? Yeah! Tell us more. Fun facts about you. Well, I'm becoming an entrepreneur, and I'm going to sell pies from a food truck that will travel around Numberopolis. I sent a picture of my food truck. Can the audience see it? Ah, nice! Yes, that's my colorful food truck. I need to decide which types of pies to sell. Don't forget, all of the digits will be selling hot dogs and fries from the truck also. What a fun food truck that will be! Pie sounds like you need to survey pie preferences of potential buyers. We'll give you some assistance during the game. Wow, great! I only asked my friends three, one, and four. But you may be right that their preferences might not reflect all potential pie buyers. Now for some intriguing historical situations about me. Mathematicians tried for centuries to find a square and a circle with the same area using only a compass and a straight edge. It was called squaring the circle. Only in 1882 it was determined by Ferdinand von Lindemann to be impossible since I was determined to be transcendental. Transcendental? Are you from the stars? Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Now I'm pretty sure very few of you in the audience care about the math term transcendental. Those of you who do care and want to know more should look in the supplemental materials. The numbers lady has been turning two circles into a square for many years to celebrate this bit of math history. She now calls it turning two circles into a selfie frame. Kids love it, and adults always say, wow. You can imagine what might happen if you adjust the instructions. That turns the activity into a STEM activity using the scientific method. And what is another fun fact about you? I was discussed in the U.S. State of Indiana General Assembly. Bill number 246 became known as the Indiana Pie Bill. It arose due to somebody thinking they had found a way to square the circle. But at least I got my name on a bill. But thankfully, just in time before the vote, Professor Waldo of Purdue University stopped the legislature from overriding mathematical truth about me by legislative vote. Apparently, <laughs> being irrational and transcendental is too difficult for many folks. Really? Anything else? I was mentioned in the O.J. Simpson trial testimony. Differing memories of my decimal expansion demonstrates how poor memories can be and how folks easily can forget even a short version of my decimal expansion. I suspect details will be provided in the supplemental material, correct? Of course. Talking with pie has made my head go in circles. <laughs> I think I smell pizza. Digits, did you order pizza to be delivered to the show? Maybe. We're all getting hungry talking about pie. That's one large pizza. Looks like there are enough pieces for all nine of us musicians. Plus me and pie. I'll take the last piece. Question for the audience. The pizza pie was 16 inches in diameter, sitting in a 16-inch square box. What is the circumference of the pizza pie? Whoever says it first gets to be first in line for the show finale, The March of the Pies. Eight times pie inches. No. Sixteen times pie inches. How many inches is that, approximately? A little more than 50 inches. Yes! And now for audience member who will get the second pizza pie. 
What is the area of the pizza pie? Sixty-four times pie, or slightly over two hundred square inches. That's a lot of pizza, but I could eat it all and still be hungry. <laughs> yes, you could. It's time for a break and message from one of our sponsors. Winning audience member, come down and bring five friends so each of you can eat two slices of pizza. If my arithmetic is good today, then each of the six people will get about thirty-three square inches of pizza to eat during the break. When we're all back, it will be time for our game to help Pi consider the pies to sell in his food truck. Yeah! Practice fractions and calculate area before you eat. Too many visits to Pi Pizzeria. Our hula hoop workout should reduce your waist diameter. We're back. Who remembers how to do the hula hoop? Ooh, that's us. I guess if I eat too much pizza, I'll have to practice more hula hoop at the gym. Ah, funny. During the break, my buddies three, one, and four created selfie frames following the instructions in the supplemental materials. They want everyone to see them. But I said they could only come out from behind the curtain if the audience applauded loudly. Audience, do you want to see them? Okay, three, one, and four, come on out and show everyone how you turn two circles into selfie frames. Today's game will be a contest between Pi and Zero. Before the show began, we asked all 100 audience members to name their top four non-pizza pie preferences. We will compare the total number of audience votes for the pies named by Zero and Pi. Whichever team wins gets to eat or give away the two smallest pies in the finale, March of the Pies. Zero and Pi, begin writing your list of the top four pies. You can win it if you try. You can do it. Let's go, Pi. Let's go, Zero. Let's go. Let's go, Zero. Let's go. Let's see the result from the 100 audience members. Pi listed four pies with a total of 265 votes, and Zero listed four pies with a total of only 199 votes. Pi wins the two small pies from the finale. Nobody mentioned pumpkin pie or chocolate cream or key lime pie. That is true. Apple pie was the pie with the most votes, 84. Cherry pie was second with 74 votes, Pumpkin Pie was third with 72 votes, and Pecan Pie was fourth with 65 votes. Many kinds of pies were mentioned by the audience, including mincemeat that Zero listed. Yeah, I wanted to see me as a score on the board. What's mincemeat? It sounds awful. Pies can be both savory and sweet. Mincemeat was traditionally a savory pie, but some people now make it with fruit. Oh, that's me! It's time for another break, and when we return, it will be time for thank you notes and a fantasy pie finale. 31 minutes and 31 flavors. How many pieces can you eat? Winner gets a pie every week for 31 weeks. We're back! I'm getting hungry for pie. Not for you, Pi, but your English food namesake. It's time for thank you notes. Thank you, Pi, for encouraging mathematicians' brains to spin for centuries. Thank you, United States Thanksgiving, for elevating Pi to the main dessert. Thank you, Pi, for letting folks show off their memory skills reciting your decimal expansion. 
Thank you, slices of real apple, for tasting better than mock apple cracker pieces in a pie. The music reminds me it's time for the pie finale! This show ends our first season of shows with pies for all. Audience, come down and choose your favorite middle-sized pies. Remember, the apple pie is for the audience member who computed the circumference of the large pizza. From Studio 10 in downtown Numberopolis, it's been a great first season. Whenever you see a circle, think of me. I applaud all of you who like to memorize my decimal expansion, and there are many other uses of me within the history of mathematics, savory and sweet foods, and fun stories. Mr. Zero, I believe there should be cooking episodes in season two. Audience, do you agree? Don't forget the downloadable Episode 7 Learning Guide, Scavenger Hunt, and associated activities from the website www.numbersalive.org. Or Teachers Pay Teachers. Thank you.